Hi everybody, welcome back. It's been a very emotionally stressful month for me. So let's jump into some info and data, shall we? Right off the bat, I'm looking at sea surface temperature anomalies here on Earth Null School. You can see up here by Greenland, we have over three degrees Celsius anomalies temperature-wise, Hudson Bay as well. Still big temperature anomalies from the El Nino here, three degrees Celsius plus, and we have a lot of three to four degrees Celsius here over by Japan, and also down here in the Pacific, and the Atlantic, oh wow. I haven't even really looked at this in depth yet. So if you can't tell already, I, uh, I chipped one of my teeth and I feel like it's changing the way I pronounce words a lot. So if you can't notice it, great, but I'm noticing it a little too much. So I wanted to talk about briefly, not this video. So Storm Kyrian, I believe it's pronounced, battered Europe. I believe it's Europe's version of what we had in New Jersey is Hurricane Sandy. And I think it's interesting that it hit the Channel Island of Jersey and there was a major tornado there because New Jersey in America, we had a, this is just Yahoo News, okay. We had a major storm a couple years ago, hurricane, and that produced tornadoes that flattened houses out here. So I wanted to talk about Storm Kyrian and also Category 5 Hurricane Otis. Storm Kyrian killed at least 14 people so far and it's also fueled a wildfire in Spain. And the interesting thing about it fueling a wildfire in Spain is a lot of people may or may not know that the fires in Maui and Lahaina were fueled by a tropical storm offshore pushing very extreme winds, among other things. It dropped eight inches of rain in three hours, over flooded the river Arno in Italy, and burst the banks of Lake Como in Italy. And the devastation it caused in the United Kingdom came off the heels of other major storms, such as Storm Babbitt, which I didn't even know about until I researched a bit more for this video. So, we're getting, not only are we getting our usual freak climate change summer hurricanes, but now we're getting these freak out of, or end of season, out of season storms. And I think as the climate and the ocean continues to warm, they're going to get worse in November and December. Talking about Hurricane Otis, there's a lot of news articles on it, but I just went right to the Wikipedia. It was the first Pacific hurricane to make landfall at Category 5 and surpassed Hurricane Patricia as the strongest Pacific hurricane on record. So this was kind of a major event that was swept under the rug mainly by most media outlets because of the fact that it wasn't in America and there's a lot of other you know, geopolitical conflict going on that I think has a lot to do with resource scarcity and climate change as much as other things, but that's a topic for another video. So, according to the Wikipedia page, there's been 48 deaths so far from Otis, 58 people missing. Not sure if all those people have been found, but this is just according to this page. And the damage was estimated to be $11.5 billion. So this is a major storm. There was an article surfaced recently about how every year over the last few years, we've had more billion dollar disasters in the United States, including winter storms like the one the ice storm that hit Texas and almost failed the whole power grid a few years ago. So a lot of really interesting stuff going on and I just wanted to note really quick that this was a category five, I think this was the first time a category five ever hit a major metropolitan city of over one million people. And the damage was portrayed here. It's gonna take a long time, you know, the tourist areas are gonna rebuild fast, but it's gonna take a long time for the poorer people to 
come back to poor businesses and the storefronts. So yeah, pressing onward. It's kind of hard to keep a level head, honestly, anymore, doing all this stuff. But pressing onward. Other things you may or may not have heard, the Panama Canal is in a major drought. They're going to be limiting the amount of ships to, I believe, 18 in February, which is a few months from now. And this is going to have major impacts. The same way the ship that was stuck in the Suez Canal, you know, there was a meme made about that a few years ago, how that dramatically affected shipping at a time where global sea routes were still reeling from COVID. And you know, they may, I've heard they've been bouncing back, but I, I don't really even believe that. There's another tropical storm. Pilar killed three people in El Salvador. Recent fires in Australia have been acting quote unquote weird burning earlier in the season and through the night. Had really rare temperature anomalies. Dubai is at 100 degrees in November, 38 Celsius. Tunisia has at 97 Fahrenheit, 36 degrees Celsius in November. It's very late in fall for these places to be hitting such high temperatures. And then we can talk about ice too. This and this is Jackson, by the way. This compilation is about, I believe, 1980 to 2023. It's 40-something years of Antarctic data. And 2023, there's no comparison. It's been record low for months. We might luck out and go, you know, past this 2016 number, but... We'll have to see. It's not looking great for Antarctic sea ice extent. And remember, last year it reached 1.97. Sorry, not last year. This year, it's still 2023 for like 50 more days. This year, 2023, Antarctic ice extent hit 1.97. All the way back here. And that's pretty close to 1. And 1 is a BOE. What is a BOE? Well, you know, when you have a glass of, you know, whatever, and there's ice in it, it'll stay cold as long as there's ice in it. As soon as that ice melts, it goes right to warm temperature. So, not even the Antarctic, but the Arctic, when that ice melts, the air conditioner of our planet, it's going to quote unquote go to room temperature. And room temperature has been pretty warm recently for the planet, not for humans. So Arctic ice extent, we haven't really been talking about it much because it didn't, go. every year we don't go to BOE, people stop paying attention to the Arctic. And I think that's kind of silly because it's important to see how much it refreezes every winter because it's leading up to something that's gonna happen. It doesn't mean BOE is like not gonna happen because it didn't happen in 2023 or 2019. It's like a distant thing now. No, it, it could still happen. In a year or two, especially with how bad this El Nino has been. There's been 130 days, according to Leon Simons on Twitter. And my Twitter is uh, jlessoyami, if you want to follow me. I'm still on it because I believe, uh, you know, what's his name is eventually going to sell it. Because he, he's lost enough money. You know, it'll go back to its usual firestorm without him. Anyway, Arctic Ice Extent right now is tied for 6th lowest on record at 8.63 and if you want to just isolate this year you can see there's kind of been these stalls and I worry about these stalls with our El Nino heat incoming because the less it grows towards next you know the beginning of next year in spring the quicker it's going to melt with the full front of El Nino coming with the North American summer in 2024. So yeah, last thing I wanted to go over, because this is already like 10 minutes, you may have heard recently about the Six Sigma standard deviation. I believe it's from 60 north to 60 south latitude in the Atlantic Ocean. It's up to Six Sigma standard deviation. So I had social statistics in college, didn't do great at it. 
So, from my understanding, they have the data from, I think it's 1991 to 2020. I don't have it on me. I don't want to, like, take the video off to look it up. So, correct me in the comments, please. But it's 20 years of data, and they took the mean of that data. And then they compare temperature from it. So, if the data is temperature X, let's say it's 70 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't know. Do your Celsius conversion. I, I don't have it in my head. Sorry. Sorry, non-American viewers. Just this once. Work with me here. Was it Fahrenheit? So let's say it's 70, and then the temperature is 71 or 72 or 70.5 even. That would be one sigma. So it's normal to get two sigmas standard deviation in this bell curve. And I believe there's a formula. It's like the square root of the variance is the standard deviation, and the variance is this equation that I don't have memorized that like I said, I got a C in stats, so <laughs> we started doing calculus is where I struggled. I'll be honest with you, we're, we're facing the, the wrapping up, so to speak, of all of this. I have to be honest about what I can do well and what I struggle with, you know? That's just reality. So two sigma deviations is relatively normal. Three is kind of crazy. Four is like extremely unheard of. Five is like that's... It's just hypothetical after five. It's like there's no way this is even a possibility. I believe the temperature probability was one in one in one point seven billion without climate change. That's the odds of it of us having a six sigma deviation in temperature. So I hope that little ramble helped at all. I'm only thirty years old. When I realized how bad climate change was, thanks to the guidance of very informed professors, both in my college and in other states, I realized I wasn't going to get old enough to be my own professor. So this is me kind of doing my own little version of that. So I hope you enjoyed. Um, social media has been really hard on the algorithms with everything going on geopolitically. So if you find it in your heart to share this video, if you liked it, it's a lot shorter than a lot of the stuff I've been watching. So that is also my incentive to be like, oh, spread this around. There's a lot of good tidbits in here and it's only less than 15 minutes. And lastly, thank you so, so much. Please, we can do a little heart. Oh, it's a bad heart, but thank you to everybody so much. I've mentioned before on my channel right here, right there is a button to donate. I've mentioned before if you have the ability to send five bucks and a couple people did send me five dollars a couple people sent me quite a bit more than five dollars and i'm super appreciative so if you're not able to donate to the channel please don't worry about it just share the video give us a like or subscribe thank you for your time your time is very valuable and important in itself there's no need to worry about donating if you can't and if you have like awesome thank you and if you feel so inclined you haven't donated, you feel like sending five bucks, it goes a long way. Like, not to sound any type of way, but if I like run out of money from bills on my paycheck and I have to use five bucks to get, you know, extra food or something or gas, I've done that. So it really shows me that at least a couple people are grateful for this work in that way. And the same with, you know, spreading the information. So thank you to everybody. And I know I'm always like, oh, I'll do more. See how all these videos, it's like a month. That shows you how my mental health has been. It take, it takes, it's taken me a month to do these four short videos. So I can say confidently there will be another one of these in less than a month. I'll see you guys soon. Take care.